Hello everyone, it is Joe here from OmniPoke, the channel that brings you guys everything Pokemon. Today we're looking at a pure Zora rock list. Obviously this deck has sometimes had the partners of Weavile and Lucario. Now we're just going for a thicker line of Lycanroc to be a little bit more consistent, whilst also adding in the Twilight Eyes Lycanroc to help out against um, the Fighting Weak stuff in the format, Mirrors and Picaron mostly whilst also offering a nice disruption ability for removing energies from sometimes opposing lichen rocks um, and other threats on the board. So this is really stripping away the Lucario line. Obviously, now we have more space for ball search, which I'm a big fan of because all we really want to do is find as many Zoroarks as possible and as many Zoroas as possible in the early turns. So being able to have spaces for three Calm as well as three Great Ball is really going to help us uh, in that cause for getting our Pokemon into play as quickly as possible. Because once we get into trading, once we get Bloodthirsty Eyes available, we have so much control over what we can do each turn. We can do some crazy stuff like Heal and Gust in the same turn. Uh, with Bloodthirsty Eyes, we can do all sorts of different crazy things when you have trade on your side. So let's have a look at the archetype in more detail. First of all, 4-4 Zoro is obvious. Trading into some combo pieces is always what we want to do. Looking for Acerolas, Guzmas, Kukui combo turns, stuff like that is always going to be important. Rattus beating, getting a nice solid 2 hit KO, 120 damage with a full bench for just a DCE is going to be really solid for us. Then we have a 3-2-1 line of the Lycanroc. One of the benefits of stripping away your other stage 1s is that we can have a thicker line of Rockcross to try and develop multiple on the early turns, which is always great. And as we know, Bloodthirsty Eyes is an incredible ability for targeting some of our opponent's big threats on the board, um, as well as giving us some disruption element in here, especially when you go first. You can target down things anywhere on your opponent's side of the field, field a lot of the time. Then we have Claw Slash doing for Fighting DC 110. Pretty vanilla, but, you know, times two for weakness. This is going to be enough for dealing with Zoroarks. Slap the Choice Band on or use a Kukui, and this can also knock out Picaroms. Definitely something to bear in mind. We also have the Dangerous Rogue GX attack for Fighting Colorless, which does 50 for each of your opponent's benched Pokemon. Very huge, huge attack in here. Again, great for those situations where you're knocking out Zoroaks and Picaroms. We have the help of Counter Gain to fulfill the Colorless cost. So even a benched Rockruff becomes a big threat. It can instantly turn into a Dangerous Rogue in Liking Rock, which does big knockouts a lot of the time because many decks need to play a lot of bench Pokemon. So definitely a nice one hit KO option from that guy there. We then have the Twilight Eyes Lycanroc GX. It has the ability, when, uh, when you play this Pokemon from your hand to evolve, uh, you may discard an energy attached to your opponent's active Pokemon. This can be, as I said, a nice defense against opposing Lycanroc GX players. Basically, when you're in Zora Rock mirror matches, if your opponent gets a Lycanroc and maybe knocks out your own Lycanroc, you can just be stuck because they can just continue to attach to their Lycanroc and you end up losing the game because they can Claw Slash and move into more one-shots on your other Zoroarks. So now, even if we can't instantly respond on their Lycanroc, we can maybe set up a two-shot with a Zoroark whilst also using a Twilight Eyes, remove their fighting energy out of the way, so it, they are basically forced to Ace Roller it and remove the threat from the board, which can be a big deal. Um, it's also really nice at just stopping, you know, taking your opponent back a turn attachment in some different random matchups can also be very nice for you. Um, it can be awkward for the likes of Ultra Necrozma, because uh, you can get rid of their Metal Energy, making them have effectively like one less Malamar in play because they have to waste a turn attachment on Metal Energies again, uh, rather than they can turn attach Psychic Energy to do more damage. So that can be a really nice ability for you in key situations. It has two attacks. Accelerock for Fighting DC does a flat 120. 120 is so much better than 110 because now we can threaten Picaroms with this guy without any requirement of damage buff. That's why we only play one band in the list because this... Uh, supports dealing with um, Picarons that much better. And we also have the Splintered Shards GX attack, which is 30 for each of your, uh, for each energy in your opponent's discard pile uh, for just that one fighting. So similar to the Lucario, we like having this one attachment potential answer for dealing with um, Picarons and Zoroarks. Obviously, we have the Twilight Eyes, which synergizes very nicely. So your opponent may think they're out of range, but the Twilight Eyes plus Band can make a Splintered Shards quite easily take knockouts once again on Picaroms. So we can either dig for counter gain combo with Dangerous Rogue or look for Splintered Shards with Choice Band oftentimes going to help us get over the line for knockouts there as well. So two Jet attacks on offer here. Acceleroc definitely worth noting to help deal with other Picaroms as well. Overall, two very nice um, cards to 
synergize with our Zoroark to give us much more control throughout the game. Speaking of control, we're going to have a 1-1 line of the Muck, which has become staple right now. Power of Alchemy just shutting down Jirachis, shutting down opposing Dittos, shutting down Coco Prism Stars, shutting down Coco GX, all that sort of stuff. Really big deal for us. So this ability is great to shut down the opponent to stop them getting their own draw engines if they're Jirachi based and basically just limits your opponent's outs a lot of the time when it's everything but mirror basically. We're going to have a quick note on this Grimer. We want to have the Chemical Breath one just for random one-shots on uh, sleeping Jirachis as well. I think this is more valuable than any other Grimer that we could be playing. I've at some points had Slippery Sludge in here, but it's felt like most of the time Confusion's not a big deal because we're up against stuff like Zapdos, which is going to have so many pivoting cards. Picarom has so many pivoting cards. Uh, in Mirror Matches, Confusion, they'll just evolve out of. So Chemical Breath feels like the more relevant attack right now. Uh, then we're going to have one Ditto Prism Star. It can evolve into three Stage 1 Pokemon, so that's a big deal. Obviously, very notable when you're up against Zapdos and Picaron players that are reliant on Jirachi. You want to get Grimer and Ditto down if possible. And rounding things out, we play the two Tapu Lele GX for Wonder Tagging in a pinch, which is always going to be a great ability for us to have on our side. We also have Energy Drive available with our DCs, so do bear that in mind. Onto the item cards, we have the classic uh, one Pal Pad to reset usually Acer Rollers, Guzmas, and Judge. Sometimes Kakui in the right spots as well. Uh, one Rescue Stretcher to recover some of our Pokemon pieces. Uh, then we're going to have all the Bull Search. We have the three Great Bulls to help complement the three Pokecoms, the four Nest, and the four Ultra. As I said, I just want to get these, these Pokemon into play. Hitting early Zeruas and Rockruffs, early Grimer and Muck can be huge. The Great Ball giving you better outs for turn one Lele as well if you're supporterless. Really nice supplementary card that's always an insta playable to improve our Lilies at the very least. So we have lots of early Pokemon search, which is what I'm really concerned about, to be honest. We want to get as many Zeruas down, as many Rockruff down. And Lily doesn't guarantee this as nicely as an Elm could. But we're making up for that fact by really flooding our deck full of ball search to make it as uh, consistent as possible, really. Um, we always want to play Lily over Elm because you want to secure Grimer so often. And this just has far better odds uh, than the Elm builds do. Even if you play like four Com in Elm, it's so rare that you can go like Elm and still Com and find a Grimer. Because even if you're using a Com, then sometimes that's like a, Zor a Zoroark out of your hand and stuff like that. And you end up drawing less cards. So Lily, in my opinion, is still the most superior build. Um, but as long as you complement it with an amount of ball search cards that can actually get you into your stuff, <clears throat> that's how it's going to work out. So I've pretty much been on the Great Ball train a long time with Zoroark just because I'm very aware of the amount of Marshadow in the format right now. And I just don't trust Lily. So I'm adding in lots of ball search to, tr to help me trust her a little bit more. From there, a couple of Viridian Forest. This can help improve your Lily as well by getting rid of excess cards from your hand, giving you insta plays as well as just helping you find energy cards to keep rolling. Obviously, we play double counter gain in this build. Um, we're not playing Mallow. We're just playing two counter gain. Alongside the Viridians, it's, it gives us really good odds of going for Riders Beating on turn two, especially if you're up against aggressive Zapdos players. Um, it also means we have good odds for Dangerous Rogue. So I like having the Viridian. It helps make sure we can get early turn one attachments onto Rockcrofts and also have the option to start moving into our other attackers pretty swiftly as well, whilst at the same time giving us constant discard search for energy cards and also improving lilies later down the line as well which is always really nice for us onto the supporter cards one judge for hand disruption on the opponent's side um one professor kakui in the build we're not playing devoured fields so we're going to have kakui to help push those numbers a little bit further uh, obviously 120 and 110 is what we hit with both our stage ones so pushing on to the likes of Boswells and stuff is going to be a pretty important deal for you. At the same time, having Kakui plus Choice Man does mean that we can Bloodthirsty Eyes up opposing Leles and take one shots on them. So I like having that option still within the deck. I have seen some uh, Zora Rocks cutting these though. If you want to cut Banned Kakui, you can and you can go to 4th Great Ball, 4th Com. That's even more Pokemon Search. Yay, less bricking. Everyone's a winner. From there, we have uh, two Acerola and two Guzma. Acerola obviously trying to undo some damage. Once you get that lo lock established with Muck, Acerola is your best friend against the likes of Zapdos players. Also very strong in mirror matches, something to bear in mind. Um, two Guzma for more targeting of your opponent's stuff. Uh, two Cynthia to supplement the four Lily. Lily obviously the best 
in the turn one situations most of the time. It falls off a little bit in the mid game, whereas Cynthia gets a little bit stronger when we need to refresh our hand. Onto the tools, I think just one choice band is becoming more and more usual in these builds. Still has some synergy with splintered shards. Obviously, we're playing the Kikui in here, so we still have that option for knocking out Lele's. So I still think one is definitely reasonable in the build. But if you do want to make those cuts, you can go for it. A couple of choice ba oh, sorry, a couple of counter gains, as I've mentioned, can improve your odds of Righteous Beating on turn two. Um, if you have suffered knockouts from your lower hit point basics in the early turns. And it improves our Dangerous Rogue odds against the Picarom. Do bear in mind, we're not playing Mallow in here. So just two copies of the counter gain. I think the biggest issue with Mallow is that you end up having to put down a Lele a lot of the time. And against um, Picaroms, you don't like putting down Lele if you can help it. Because it gives them easy snipe targets. Also, it gives them easy Guzma targets. Um, and at the same time, if we're up against some Picaroms that are Jirachi based, we'll be using Muck anyway. So finding that Mallow just becomes a kind of random factor. Whereas having the double count gain helps us dig it out a little bit more without having the need for a Mallow in here. Onto the energy cards, just a 4-4 split. Um, you could consider playing Rainbow Energy in the build. Rainbow allows you to pick up your Aloha Muck if it is going to get trapped alongside an Roller. Also could help you like reuse Twilight Eyes or Bloodthirsty Eyes in a certain turn. If your board is full but you have a spare Rockruff, you can Rainbow, Acerola and then Bloodthirsty Eyes. So it's effectively giving you like more Guzmas but in a roundabout way. Uh, the reason I'm not playing Rainbow, uh, for all of its um, strong traits to help you out, it puts, it puts both your Lycanroc... Uh, down to um, 190, which is really awkward for you because there are so many lightning decks that like to push that number, that odd number. So having 200 is effectively the same as 210 against the lightning stuff a lot of the time. Unless it's exactly against Picaron doing their GX attack uh, because they're all hitting odd numbers. So going down to 190 puts you in range of, you know, Zero Auras, uh, Coco GXs, all that stuff a lot more easily. Uh, Jolteons as well. So that's something you need to bear in mind. Um, you really don't like going down to 190 hit points. So it's like the worst energy that you can attach on turn one. It's also terrible attaching turn one to like Rockruff uh, because it pushes you down to 60 hit points. So then you can get like Lele Grinched early and so many other things can just take you out pretty early. So if you want to play the Rainbow, you do gain some versatility in picking up your Muck and giving you the option for Tapu Cure. But do bear in mind, it's very, it's much more scary to attach it. Um, to your Lycan Rocks themselves, so do bear that in mind. Um, so yeah, just the four basic energy as well. Also, sort of a downside of Rainbow is that it's not searchable via the forest, and as you can trade your way through the game, you may end up drawing into some of your basic energies naturally, um, whereas finding the Rainbow is not going to be so easy. <clears throat> so yeah, that's going to be it for really the cards. Uh, you can think about adding in that Mallow, like I said, um, maybe a few other cards here and there. Uh, enhanced Hammer might be more reasonable when you're playing Splintered Shards and you're already playing Twilight Eyes, so you can get even more removal from the opponent. But overall, this is the build that I'm going to be sticking to. And we'll jump onto the ladder and play some Zoro Rock Rock. Get the uh, get the Zoros on board, hopefully. Get those uh, Bloodthirsty Eyes rolling and try and control the game. That's pretty much how this deck tries to play. I think, obviously, sacrificing the likes of like Weavile does hurt potentially your... Ultra Squids and your um, Blacephalon matchups. So that's something to keep note of. But uh, if you want to add in stuff like Giratina for B-String based decks, you can go for that if you really wish. We have a Ditto start. And good thing we play all this Bull Search. Otherwise the hand would be pretty embarrassing. We get to go first here. And we're up against Charizard. Charizard is... An interesting deck. Obviously, it likes to get itself down to 130 hit points with its own ability a lot of the time. So, trying to um, trying to reuse our Kukui's is going to be good. Obviously, they are Jirachi based as well, so that can give us a good indication that um, <clears throat> Muck is going to be a good card here. So, we have a nice Ultra Ball. I think it's going to be Energy Lycanroc that goes here. Just for an early scout, we draw the Lily for turn, or off our mulligans either way. Um, Acerola is going to be a good deal for us. Obviously the Charizard can reach one shots, but it requires a lot. It requires like its ability to go off, attachment, band, all that sort of stuff. So I think we start off with the Ultra. Get rid of these. We have a guaranteed other attachment from the forest that we have that we can play down and grab after the Lily. We do have Grimer. 
I'm just going to guarantee Zerua here. Uh, we are actually so likely to hit Zer We're much more likely to hit Zerua's off the uh, Great Balls. Let's do this. Pulling a Pokemon out of your deck first. Might have been wrong, actually. I probably should have used the Great Balls first. Free information and more Pokemon targets. Yeah, that was bad, uh, <clears throat> bad Great Ball sequencing, but... We end up still finding a good array of basics, thanks to these lovely Great Balls. We're not going to Forest first. I think Acerilla and Zoroark are two stronger cards to avoid. We pick up a Nest Ball for another Zerua. And this is the joy of playing lots of, uh, lots of Ball Search. We're just going to attach to the Rockruff and pass turn here. We have Zoroark, at least for turn two. We can Lele if we really have to get a fresh hand, depending on how much pressure we're going to be under. We see attachment to Charmander and just a Cynthia out the gate. <clears throat> the opponent chose not to Viridian anything away. We see another Nest Ball. You might be able to hear a cat purring into the microphone, by the way. <laughs> She's planted herself right in front of my screen to make life difficult for me. Good thing I used two. But they're going to grab another Jirachi, which is kind of risky because we could just go for that Bloodthirsty Eyes and knock out, but they end up getting bailed out and finding another Nest Ball anyway. Uh, I wonder how that would have gone if they didn't. Kind of risky from them. They're going to skateboard, probably just go into the other Jirachi. And they're going to grab another Nest Ball. Really good start from them. You basically play Jirachi, so you can find Nest Balls in the early turns and rare candies in the mid game. So they've done very well on Nest Balls. Found more than us. <laughs> Our great balls serve the purpose. And this is going to pass. Okay. So we can evolve. Now, we really want to hit DCE really badly. I think it is badly enough that we want to Lele here. I think I'm going to Bloodthirsty Eyes up Charmander with energy. We're only really scared of that. Because they go 5, 10, 15, 18, and then 2, 10 for the 30 base. So this way we force more stuff from him. I think Lele for... Uh, do I want to Ultra Ball away Guzma here? Hmm. Just to establish another Zoroark. Yeah, I think we will. I really don't want to whiff energy. Small debate to uh, Leleing first and then like Ultra Balling for Muck, but I think we're so likely to find Muck anyway with all the ball search that we have. We still have our comms. We're drawing 12 cards. No, sorry, we're drawing 10 cards. Possibly 12. Try and hit DCE here. <clears throat> Let's trade away Nest Ball. Okay, there's DCE. Trade away Nest Ball. Let's calm in a Lycan Rock and just grab that Muck now. Try and make them work off of a four card hand. This is the control aspect that we're talking about. We were able to gust and shut down his draw engine, both on turn one. So that's pretty insane. <clears throat> Notably, we could have forested away energy for energy, just to thin the deck of one energy, but we've already got rid of one. So I was kind of hesitant to do that. But if we were desperate, we could have gone for it.
<clears throat> they still aren't able to achieve Candy Zard. They still can get a knockout this turn. They could attach Continuous Blaze, uh, sorry, attach Roaring Resolve, Choice Band, Blaze Ball. It's in their range. It's just how nice their three card hand is. We actually see them attach to Charmander. So that should give us an indication. See a Guzma stalling us. Oh, they just want to deal with the muck, actually. Okay, that's fine. <clears throat> It was from a Grimer. Okay. Digging for Stretcher will be good here. Let's trade away Lele. Trade Band. GX attack sounds fine. Com for another trade. I think it's reasonable. Have I already played Stretcher? Is it prized? Yeah, it's prized. So we can't reestablish a. Uh, We're just going to Lily for two. I'm not going to Forest away Forest because we want to uh, have this available for Heat Factory. Let's do our final trade. And we'll just GX Charizard number one. Obviously, they do have Jirachis. Try and re-establish one. We're basically trying to dig into our deck to try and work towards Kukui for this next Charizard, if he is able to get a one-shot. We're also looking at Guzma if everything else fails. They put down another Charmander... Skateboard the next Jirachi. Stellar Wish number one gets them into a Lily. See attachment again onto the Charmander. There's the rare candy. So now they can Roaring Resolve and take a knockout. Stretcher as well. For three targets. Boring resolve. And continuous blaze ball. Count gain is currently live. Uh, we still promote this for now. I think we're trading energy. That's our last fighting, so we have no more Lycan Rocks to use for attacking purposes, but I think it's too late for any attacking with them now. Am I trading this Judge? I really don't like trading Judge, but we want a Kukui this turn if we can. <laughs> judge is just so strong for us. Where can I weave it in, though? Don't think we'll have time to weave him in. I have Power Pad if I need to. this great ball 
Snokakui. Okay. I think we still might be just smacking the active here. Make him have heal. Otherwise, he has to move it out of the active himself. He can't roaring resolve. Unless he has heal. See another Charmander come down. Absol comes down. That's fine. They might be lowering their hand size for the Lily that they have in hand. Attachment to the bench. Lily for five. Two candies played so far. Still a fairly thick deck from them. 23 cards. They're going to Roar and Resolve to give us a prize card. This lets them Stellar Wish. Pretty cute play. Shrine comes in. Looks like they're digging for a piece. Might be a rare candy that they're after. Or a search card for Zard. One of the two. We are attacking with a Ditto Zoroark, so the hope is that we can Ace a tank a hit and re-establish a garb if we can get a stretcher, but still prized currently. There's the Stellar Wish. There's the Retreat, they're looking for another Stellar Wish. Having a second attempt. Ultra Ball might be what they're after, if they're holding on to Rare Candy. There's a Recycler, that's definitely important as well. Seven in their discard pile. <clears throat> Here's the Ultra Ball. Just a Charmeleon. It's a big relief. <clears throat> and we're going to take some shrine damage here. So, stadium goes in. Let's thin some more cards. That we don't need. I'm well aware of my deck size, by the way. We have Palpad. Pretty sure Charmander is still the bigger threat here. We've just given him Viridian, though. Hmm, giving him Viridian means that he can easily just be the same threat this way around. Uh, but he needs to find Choice Band still that way. Okay. We'll deal with Charmander. Uh, we should probably Ace Rally this while we have the chance. Do you see the attachment to Charmeleon evolves into Zard? There's the band, so he has guaranteed knockout, but this is his final Charizard currently. 
It's how else he can develop his board from here on. Well, there's a Cynthia. That's going to help his cause. Stella Wish. For another Cynthia. Continuous blaze ball for the knockout. His hand size is so large that I think we're going to do the same thing where we put him 10 off a knockout rather than using Kikui. It's also kind of better to put him 10 off because it means, well, I mean, he can still do the Roaring Resolve thing to allow him to do the Jirachi anyway, but. We basically access our whole deck if we need to next turn, so. Let's see if he can uh, take the final prize here. Then being able to knock out the muck has been really strong for them. And our prize stretcher hasn't helped the cause. See how he wants to do this. Heat Factory can help him dig. Uh oh. Hmm. Very good. Oh, Judge just isn't N, is it? <laughs> we got mugged. Mugged by Zard. Okay, let's have another game. Pretty unfortunate uh, rescue stretcher prize. We led it to as well, so we had to evolve. Yeah. Yeah, one of those things. Plus, I mean, they just didn't whiff, like, at all. They had the one Charmeleon turn, I guess. Yeah. I mean, it's fine. <clears throat> the other Zoroark builds potentially would be stronger. The Weavile would be in that matchup. But even then, we would need Rescue Stretch. <laughs> so. Ah. Uh, Greninja of some sort. Are they trying out the new Detective Pikachu Greninja? Let's read on. Well, they're definitely playing all the Foggos out there. Have a lot of awkward stage ones trapped in our hand right now. We'd love like a Pokecom top deck or an Ultra Ball, even that's fine. Just to improve this Lily. Speaking of which, they go for one, for six. Looks like they're Glaceon based. Instead of a good top deck, we get a Guzma. It's 
Twilight Eyes is very, very good against... Oh, no, it's not very good against Glaceon. What am I talking about? Okay, let's get rid of them. Proactively leleing, expecting this Ditto to evolve into Glaceon. For ultimate despair. Let's pass. <clears throat> They could go Frog, 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 or they could go Frog, Frog, Glaceon, DCE. Lots of scary potential coming up here. Accept your challenge. The challenge is to come back from this. Hmm. Very good. Well, we got some basics down. That's good news. The bad news is we can't draw cards against this deck. More bad news for us. Wait, why would just is he GXing? I guess he's GXing. Okay. Sure. Feels bad, man. Go on, play a super scoop up. Make me feel true despair. Oh, he could just have game with a frog. Oh, not game. And yet, still probably game. I probably should have held this Grimer. 60 and 80 was the same. Well, bailed out despite being really bad at this game. We'll just swing. It does feel relatively inevitable, though. He's close to... Oh, no, he's already used uh, his GX attack. I was thinking about Shadowy Hunter. And still continue his frog army. Oh, that's game. Sure. Well, that's good. Let's have one more game with this deck. It's 
This is another Charizard. Salty. <laughs> it always feels bad when I lose a Zoroark because it's like the try hard deck. And then we face random stuff and lose. These are fat sour taste. This could be a mirror though. See Ultra Ball for Lele. Quick Nest Ball first. Hmm, we see a lot of fighting stuff. We don't like facing fighting decks. <laughs> This could be the three L's for our Zora Rock today. Tough Rubber the Green. Who knows though, never give up. Uh, that's a whiff from the Great Ball, because we're going to be playing Cynthia. Pretty sure we're going to be playing Cynthia. Um, yeah. Finding more Zoruas against a full fighting deck is brave, but we need to draw cards if we're going to win this game. I always enjoy drawing cards. Gonna proactive Lele again. I think it's what we pivot into next turn. And we need to do this anyway. Potential worry of them finding Choice Band and GXing through the Lele for two prizes. But if we don't bench this, we just like promote this and still get bopped so that's always fun they're gonna grab an ultra ball for a lichen rock it's gonna do the bloodthirsty eyes for ditto it means we can't do our twilight eyes play so see a claw slash. We are holding a Cerola. Yeah, we're just gonna swing. Holding a Cerola Ultra Ball to like try and two shot this sounds reasonable. Ultra Balling for a Zoroark or a basic, it both has too many risks. He has Ditto that can turn into another Bloodthirsty Eyes. He could just find Choice Ban and GX our Lele if we bench another target. <coughs> if we Cynthia with no trades on board, we're unlikely to get back into a Cerola. So, probably just swinging is best. Evolving to Ducario. Okay. That's really good for us, actually. I think that's one of the best outcomes we could have hoped for. He basically took a threat off his board by evolving. I guess he kind of replaced that threat anyway. But we're just going to build up Lele. 
not give him any easy prizes. Again, we're still holding Ace and Ultra. This isn't too much of a threat at the moment. If he attaches a second energy, of course, it does become somewhat of a threat, but... But this DIs means he can take another single prize. Does he have an attachment to boot? There's a let loose. Okay, that's scary. This is why we play all the bull search. <laughs> to try and uh, get out of these situations. They're going to Lily for three cards. They find an energy, we're very scared. Oh, okay. He definitely should have attached here. But whatever. If he attaches here, I don't think we can win. But now we can win. We just have to get lucky. Remind me how we win again. Hmm. Not hitting into this is a start. This for removing energy or for a GX attack is also going to be amazing. So, benching a Pokemon makes us weak once again to Dangerous Rogue. There's Diancie in play now. Not putting down another Rockruff means we could be vulnerable to uh, <clears throat> just the Guzma, Guzma energy. I gotta think though, if he had fighting energy, he would have attached to active. I think we just pass. We just say Cynthia. Blower is actually very, very annoying. That's a huge hit from them. That's going to hit us for 50. Okay, no attachment is good news for us again. Hmm, right. I think we need to bloodthirsty eyes. You have to play so carefully here. <clears throat> we want this win. We'll work for it.
Kikui. For two. Claw Slash, obviously scary. Switch is less scary. 70. Wow, he didn't Claw Slash. Interesting. So we Dangerous Rope this. Try and just like remove energies off his lichen rock. So this has to happen. GX this. I can't two shot it because of this. He comes in, hits for 130 for knockout. What do we have to do? Uh, it's going to be so rough. We definitely need to bench stuff this turn, though. I should have played this. No, this is actually correct. Thin the deck of these targets and save these for evolutions. We're going to try and do some trapping. It's all we can do, I think. Oh, maybe benching stuff was actually... Uh, yeah, when there's this, we have to bench stuff. Yeah. Okay. This has gone super strange. Really weird game. Not comfortable. I'll tell you that much. Him getting back a rock rough might seal our fate. Might give him easy way to just gust something for game. The Kakui was pretty clutch on his side. So he can always win by gusting this, so we may as well actually actually play this first. This happens, this happens. Get rid of that. Of this. Uh, no, energy sucks. Obviously we have Viridian, but if I do that, he's so much more likely to just win. Where do my last two prizes come from? Yeah, it's getting... The jaws are starting to shut on us now. We just got a pass, though. He could well have us here. Ah, he has his own Viridian. Yeah, he got us in the end. <clears throat> Not surprising that we were whiffing stuff. Obviously, we weren't able to trade the whole game. <laughs> so, yeah. We almost brought it close. But in the end, it was uh, a defining victory for them. But yeah, that's uh, Zora Rock Rock. Three losses for us. Um, I'd like to say all in unfortunate circumstances. But yeah, um, it's still a top-tier deck, trust me. It's good. <laughs> and the list is good, I promise. Just don't hurt me anymore, game. I've been hurt too many times today. 
yeah, uh, I guess test out for yourselves. It can't go any worse than it did today for me. So, yeah. Hope you all had fun laughing at me. And uh, I'll be back tomorrow, I guess. Got to dust ourselves off and uh, play a new deck tomorrow. Thanks for watching, guys. Cheers.